All right, welcome to the podcast, guys. Today we're here with uh, Christian from uh, Woking. Could you tell us a bit about yourself? Right, so my name's Christian Jolly, uh, ex-professional footballer. Now have gone into the backroom staff at Woking Football Club, so I help out with the strength and conditioning, making sure the players are ready to go um, of a fixture and a match day. Um, and I'm two years in on a physical degree for me to become a physiotherapist within the, the football industry what, what else would you like to know all right go on jake start off with the questions no go on george you start us off you start us off all right okay we'll start off with uh, your childhood what was you like a massive football fan as a child um so i was a bit i was a bit late to the game to be quite honest um i didn't really start playing football until i was about seven or eight um and i just realized that a couple of the guys in, in my class were playing for the school team. Um, so I, I decided to jump on it then. Um, I've always been an athlete, so I was always pretty quick um, and agile. So I found a position on the team and then started to progress from there. And it, it, it's, quite, it's quite good for socialising. So making friends, especially at eight. Yeah. I played a couple of years in primary school and then Going into secondary school, you, you, it's quite a, a daunting feat trying to make friends and being in a whole new environment. So football was the, um, was the intermediary to, to allow me to make friends and meet, meet new people. When, was, uh, when did you realise that football was the way you went with your life pretty much? Um, again, I think deep down we all want to be footballers and and as a child you'd watch your match of the day on a Saturday and you want to be on the TV and scoring goals in front of large crowds and, and so on so I think secondary school the better team for outside of school the more sort of uh, credit you got and and the cooler you were at school so that was always a good um, motivator um, but I didn't I didn't turn pro until I was 21 I was I was really late again onto the scene um, I found it very difficult at academy level and and trying to progress and make it into the um into the professional football world but i um i managed to break through later on at the age of 21 and and that's when i really wanted to focus so i was i was lucky in regard because my journey took me to a to a place where i was 16 and accepted that um, which meant that I I studied I myself I experienced in numerous job roles, which helped me prepare for life as well. So I sort of had a, a late start. Yeah, uh, what else you got? For me? Hold on, mate. You're you're lagging uh, quite a bit. Is it just me, Jake? No, I'm getting it as well. I think we're back it's, now. Are you back? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. There yeah. There we go. Uh, could you just repeat the last bit you said? If that's last right. bit. Okay. So, so where where did I get up to? Uh, you got up to that. Uh, the when it started breaking up, you were talking about you. Uh, you were a late breakthrough. You didn't uh, start an academy. You started when you were 21, a uh, professional. That's where you got up to. Okay, gotcha. So, yeah, so I made it through at 21. So, didn't quite make it at academy level. Um, couldn't get a youth deal anywhere. So, I turned sideways, basically. Gave up on the, the football dream, as it were. And started to knuckle down with education and get qualifications in, in other professions to, to try and find and forge a career outside of football so looking back at it now it worked for me although I wanted to play football from day dot um, it's meant that I had the building bricks to sort of transition away from football and start a new career. Jake? Um, what age do you think you were when you when you realised that football football was the way that you wanted to go and then what age were you when you realised that football well what age were you when you thought that football wasn't going to be the way that you were going to go? Um, so I think I was probably 12 or 13 when I really thought, right, I'm pretty good. I went from a small primary school to a large secondary school 
and I was I was one of the handful of players that were the best in the year in the school. So that gave me the confidence to to suggest that I could maybe go on and do something game. Um, so that was my focus really. Tried to make sure that I was as fit as I could be and practice my skills and make sure I was ready for an opportunity. Um, and then I had friends within the school that were getting picked up by teams and, and they were getting their opportunity and it, it never come for me. I wasn't, I wasn't quite good enough to, to shine through and, and get given that opportunity. So that never happened. And then I went on trial at 16 um, to local non-league youth sides to um, see if I could get into that sort of development program. So that was age 16 and got knocked back by everyone. Um, I think my size and my build had a lot to to play with that. I, ha- I think I've always had the ability, but I've always been very slight and and uh, a mild frame. So that doesn't so much go for you in the, the physical nature of football sometimes. So looks can be deceiving, which I've, I've proved over the years. But at that point, I didn't have enough of a CV um, to boost my credentials. So... Um, I got knocked back. So, yes, yeah, so at age 16 onwards of the trials, it was leave football alone and it's time to focus on on other professions. So I sort of gave up on it a little bit. I always kept myself fit and looked after myself. and But it was never onwards of 16. It was never my primary purpose to um, to play football. Just, uh, OK, so uh, what do you think if you uh, carried, maybe even got into academy, maybe even started playing football at a younger age, do you think maybe your ability could have got better? So it's a really good question. And it's a debate that I've got one of my close, close friends, he, um, he got picked up by a professional Premier League club at the age of nine. So we went to primary school together. He got signed there and he spent all the way up to the age of 19 at this club. So he got his scholars, he got his first year pros, second year pros, third year pros. And he, um, so he went the complete different path to me. He started out in a club and followed it all the way through and he's still playing at the moment. So he went that route. I went the route where I, I played um, at a level initially to, to see whether I could, I could test myself at the age of sort of 19, 20. And it was also alongside university studies. So as you, you're probably aware when you're at school and, and you're a student, um, money's tight and you, you haven't got that much going. So if you want to play football and you, you're able to earn some money playing, then it's a good opportunity to sort of complement your studies. So that's what I did. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's difficult. I don't know. Knowing what I know now and the experience that I've had and, and living through my friend's eyes in regard to being part of a professional club for that amount of time, I don't know whether I had the makeup to go that route. Um, but I don't know. Until you walk the walk, you, um, you can't really definitively tell. But I'm glad I took the path that I did and it worked out really well for me. Um, but yeah, who's to say whether... I was picked up at an age I, I might have made it into um, the top levels of the game and, and had bigger accolades and achievements. Uh, so we have here that you started off for uh, ASC Wimbledon. What was that like playing for a team like Wimbledon? Um, so brilliant. So I, I initially my senior football career started uh, in part football at Oxford District. So that was, it was sort of really low non-league standards, sort of pub football, beers on the sidelines, cigarettes at half time. It was very, very stereotypically sort of Sunday league football, but a great crowd, a great club. And that's where I got my ground in. That's where I knew how to take a clump on a football field and, and learn how to get up from it. So that really, really helped me and held me in good stead. And then I went on to Kingstonian. So that's when I started earning money to play which was a great, great um, experience and, and a steep learning curve. I think um, the things, experience as a youngster, we always laughed at experience. Why aren't I playing? He's playing because he's got more experience and so on and so on. And it always, to me, when I was younger, felt like a bit of a cop-out when I was felt I was better, I was more talented, had more skill, was quicker, fitter. But as you get older and you're in scenarios on the pitch where experience plays a huge role and 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 you understand it as you get older um but yeah 
having the opportunity to go through to Wimbledon from Kingstonian was amazing. I was part of the the team that it was the first year the club went full time, so we were full time professionals that that year. Um, it's obviously a massive expense for football teams to to go full time in the conference. So um, we the squad was full of youngsters. So I mean, I was twenty. I was just turned twenty one when I signed, and I was I was one of the younger players, um, older players. Sorry, excuse me. So um, you could tell how young the team was at that time, and we were the underdogs, but we were we were all so hungry, so so motivated to prove that we could be professional footballers, and we all were on one year contracts. So the dream could die pretty quickly if you don't perform and, and prove that you're an asset to the club um, and worth keeping. So it was an amazing year, absolutely fantastic. First taste of full-time football, so I got to completely dedicate myself to, to being the best that I could be. And it finished off with a promotion. I finished top scorer to, to, the, to the league's top scorer. Mm. And... I was playing League Two football inside 12 months of being a, a full-time pro, so it couldn't it couldn't have gone any better for me. Uh, starting off as a, an older one, joining the Wimbledon side, was that uh, was there like any difference? Did you fit in quite well? Yeah, I, I mean the age gaps. I'm talking. We were there were ages from 18 to 25, 26. So I was sort of in the middle of it, but as I was older than uh, than two handfuls of the squad, it was quite it was it was new to me because although I was older in age in football age, I was a lot younger. So some of the lads that were eighteen, nineteen, they'd been in academies all their lives. So they wrapped up, sort of been in a professional environment, had the facilities, had the coaching had the experience to go to big stadiums and play, whether it be reserve football or youth cup football. So footballing wise, they had a lot more experience than me. I might have had a bit more life experience, but it was quite an interesting dynamic. So it took me a while to find my feet there because I'm asking a lot of questions and learning quickly what you should do and can't do. Um, And you just figure things out on the way, but yeah, it's part of the journey. Jake? Would you say that you learnt more off of the younger players in the Win- in the Wimbledon team? Oh, good question. Um, do you know who I learnt the most from? The people that were playing in the starting eleven. I don't. I, they're the they're the real ones. You've got your your spine of the team that never changed. You've got your goalkeeper, your centre halves. You've got normally one midfielder, a holding midfielder, and then you've got a striker. That's your spine of the team that that you just, they play 40 out of 40 games a season. They're just, they're the ones you learn from a lot from because it's all about being in the starting 11 come Saturday or a Tuesday night. So they, they were the ones that I quickly picked up on if I want to wanna have, a, have an opportunity in the game and, and forge a career for myself. You need to sort of map yourself against, against these players and, and watch what they do and, and why they play every week. As a squad, you come together. Um, there's, there's weeks where you're not playing well and, and you don't justify playing in the starting eleven. And there's other weeks where you're right, really unfortunate. You're really unlucky. There was, there was games where I was eager to get on and, and someone had a bad game, but they scored a goal. And goals are like gold dust in football. So if you're scoring, you tend to play. And then there was other games where I was playing. I wasn't playing well. But then I was scoring. So it works for you just as quickly as it works against you. And, and that's the beautiful thing about football. It's, it can turn so quickly if you can hold your temperament and hold your, your emotion. You can really, really have a great opportunity to, to achieve some amazing things. OK, so we'll move on. Uh, what, what was you uh, like? What's it like moving? Because you've been at a number of clubs. What's it like moving to different clubs? <laughs> Is it hard to fit in? Um, moving to different clubs. So, uh, Kingston into Wimbledon was an easy fit because they ground shared. So, I was familiar with the surroundings. It was a whole new squad being signed. So, 
that was fine because we were all new. So we all had to get, each, get to know each other at the same time. So that was absolutely fine. Moving across to Newport from Wimbledon. Again, I was really fortunate because five, six players out of the squad I'd played with before. So I'd already known them. They were ex-Wimbledon and, and ex-other clubs that, that I was familiar with. And then when you play a few years at any level, you tend to get familiar with the players that you play against. You, you, you know who's in the league and who does what. And, and you have conversations and communications on the pitch and that sort of thing. So by the point I went to Newport, I'd already had sort of two, three years at senior football at roughly Conference League 2 level. So I was pretty familiar with everyone in and around that, that standard. So the hardest thing when you go to any new club is you just want to hit the ground running. So that tends to give you a little bit of um, the credentials that you need to sort of advocate why you're at the club and um, get everyone to buy in and, and get on with you. So that was cool. And then the toughest move of my career was going up to Grimsby, which is the, the up north. It's, um, it's an amazing place. It really is unique. Um, but very, very different to down south. So I've sort of grown up just outside of Croydon and been at Wimbledon, which is local, Kingstonian local. Newport was like a little bubble. So it was almost like a little Croydon just in Wales. So all the players lived together, had the same schedule. So if we wanted to go for a bite to eat, cinemas, socialising, everyone was available because we, we were all there to play football. So that was great. But Grimsby was a little bit different because the core of the team didn't live in Grimsby. They all travelled in from your Sheffields and your, your local surrounding areas, which meant socialising was difficult. I lived in a hotel the whole time I was up there, which it sounds great initially, but when you can't just cook yourself beans on toast because you haven't got a kitchen or anything, you, it gets difficult. So you're eating out every day. And so that's sort of breakfast, lunch and dinner and, the novelty wears off when you've been to sort of Frankie and Benny's every day for six months. It's yeah, it's, it's not, it's not great. So that was really tough. And then I picked up an injury. So that's it, being injured is, is the worst being a footballer. All you want to do is play. And then if you specifically go to somewhere where you're away from family and friends to play, and then you pick up an injury, it's, it's a real, real, real test. And, that was probably the biggest test of my career and I didn't I didn't pass it if I look back at it now I, I just couldn't I didn't have the resilience to pass it I felt alone and isolated and this is where the whole the mental health which is now it's it's a it's a real talking point and people have the confidence to discuss it and whatnot which is really really important and if, if you feel low or you feel like you just haven't got the motivation to, to keep going it's probably a sign that that things aren't right up top. So that was probably my darkest days in football, just because I just didn't have a good support network. I was I was on my own in the hotel, and you've just got four walls to look at, and and nothing really gets back. And if you've got lots of time, which you do as a footballer, you you tend to be finished up in the season by one o'clock, one thirty. There's a lot of the day to to think and to sort of dwell on things. So so yeah, Grimsby was a real real test, but amazing people and amazing staff at the club and the players were brilliant it was just the circumstances where I was going to the club in low in form I picked up an injury and yeah things sort of spiraled and before you know it the season gets away from you and and you're on your way home and you don't feel like you've achieved that much in the in the spell that you've been there. Okay so the last thing I'd want to talk about with you is uh Woking, uh, your time at Woking, uh, you played a couple, a number of games. You've, uh, and uh, I'd say the biggest game of uh, your Woking career, especially, was be Woking versus Watford. Yeah, most definitely. So again, Woking, again, club close to my heart. It's it, it's somewhere that they've really gave me an opportunity to sort of transition away from the game and still be part of the club. So I'll be internally grateful for those guys for, for allowing me to do that. And they still support me now. So, yeah, a brilliant club, amazing fan base, the staff and behind the scenes, um, the board and whatnot. Fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. They're, um, they really want to excel and, and do well. And, and I think that's all in line with the squad, the players, the management, 
So it's an exciting place to be at the moment. They gave me an opportunity to sign as a player, um, which which was which they they gambled to be quite honest because I had a really bad injury the season before, um, where I hadn't. I think I played fifteen games the season before and and really struggled to get fit. And then my first friend, Neil, my, my first friend at, at home, I was a nasty tackle and, and I got injured again. And that gave me enough of an opportunity to, to recover and get fit. And I managed to break into the team. And yeah, what an experience. I mean, that's the, that's the furthest I've got in my career in the FA Cup. It's a really, really difficult, difficult cup to have a run in. So it was, yeah, it was a really special moment to, to share it with Woken and for me personally to, to reach that level and, and tick a box that I've always wanted to do. So, yeah, special, really, really special. And, and it just shows you, I think, you, we, watch, we watch the Premier League and the, the top level players on TV and we know they do some amazing things and they're super talented. However, when you're up close and personal with them, you really realise the speed at which they move the ball and, and how quickly and athletic they are. Anyone that you think is slow in the Premier League, they're probably definitively quicker than you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just uncanny. I just think yeah. they're up against players that are lightning. So it's a great experience. I mean, I, I managed to mix with the top level a handful of times and it, it, it is amazing and it's eye-opening and, and you realise some people talk as if, what if, if I did this, if I did that, I could have played at that level. I, I think I used the majority of my attributes. I think I've, I got it right a lot of the time. I just wasn't good enough to, to play and mix it with the top, top players. I, I was always a League Two conference player, um, which I'm proud to say it's, it, it's no short feat, but these people that we see on TV week in, week out are on a different planet. All right. You said that you had to go at uh, 7.55. Yeah, Sorry. that's right. I mean, I've got one, one more question. If you, if you want to get one more in, I can, I can answer that for you. Jake? I'm all good. I'm all good. We'll let you go. Oh, wonderful, guys. Well, good luck with it all. This is amazing. It's fantastic that you, you're reaching out to people and, and making these things happen. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So anything I can do to help you guys out, let me know. Um, but Thank yeah, it's much. fantastic. Great setup and very entrepreneurial. It looks like you're going out and, and making things happen. So keep doing it, keep knocking on doors and, um, and you'll never know who answers and gives you an opportunity. But an absolute pleasure to talk to you both. All right, thank thank you very much for coming on. Take care. No problem at all, right? You've got my details on Insta. So just send me a message if you need anything and I'll try my best to help you guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, stay well, stay healthy. See you soon. You too, you mate. Too. Okay, mate. Bye. 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 See you guys later.